All right, so today we're going to talk about combo theory and routing. Well, what does that entail? What, what do I mean by that? In this game, there is hit stun and hit stun deterioration, right? When you get the hit, depending on the strength of the move, it has a different amount of time for you to combo, right? That is the hit stun, okay? So you heavy, you see the bar lasts much longer than just a jab, right? You have all this time to hit your opponent, whether it's with a beam, you can vanish, obviously, basically off of anything and everything. You can tag, you can call an assist if it hits full screen, things like that. And again, certain moves give you more opportunity than others. They are better to use at higher or lengthier combos. So I'm going to basically explain why you do A, B, and C in the formula. All right, for starters, let's talk about the strength of each move, right? Jabs obviously have the lowest hit stun. As you see, the bar goes down very quickly. Mediums are better, especially crouching medium. It gives you time to combo things you typically can't combo. For example, on some characters, you can't combo a beam off a stand medium, but you can on a crouching medium because, again, it gives you more hit stun. It gives you more time to combo because they're falling down as opposed to just staying in place. So that's why you'll see people do a crouching medium into a beam or a certain move because it's like, oh, this works. Well, why does it work? Well, this is why it works. Another thing that people don't really talk about when it comes to combo structure or just making a combo in general is that you can take too long in between hits that will cause your opponent to flip out at the end. You know, sometimes you do a combo, right? Same exact combo, you've done it all the time, but sometimes they'll flip out at the end and you wonder why. You're like, well, I did the combo the same way how I always do the combo. Why do they flip out? Well, it's probably because you maybe took an extra, you know, fraction of a second here or there. So right now I'm going to show you the same two combos, but on the first version of this combo, after I spark, I'm going to let Vegeta bounce off the ground. But on the second one, I'm not going to let him bounce off the ground. As you're going to see, that fraction of a second will be the reason why the combo works. All right, now on this second one, I'm not going to let him bounce and I'm going to do the air dash heavy and the entire combo as fast as I can. All right, so I kind of bounced a little bit, but you get my point. Same exact combo, no different inputs. The only difference was how fast I did the combo. Sometimes it's really just a matter of you did it too slow. You waited a little bit longer. You hit the button too late after you sparked and then you dropped it. Instead of sitting there thinking, well, the game is done. I mean, kind of, kind of is. But at the same time, it's also, you know, one of these unspoken rules of, oh, I just, I just did it too slow. It, it took me too long to do the combo. So just keep that in mind when formulating a combo. You know, don't delay things too much, right? If you don't have to, because it could just mess up the whole thing. Do it a little bit faster. Now, of course, when structuring a combo, the best combo is the combo you can land. However, if you can make it to where you can land stronger hits earlier in a combo, it'll give you more damage and better routes. So let me show you an example with the Dark Gohan. Now, a common misconception when doing a combo is thinking, yeah, I'll land a bunch of hits early on in the combo. You know, I don't care if they're light moves. It'll give me more meter and more damage. Well, no. Light moves scale a lot harder than mediums and heavies in this game, you know, because they're light starters. They do less damage, add more hit stun. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure they also add more hit stun. So. In this next version of the combo, if I were to, let's say, get a grounded hit and immediately go into crouching light, into beam, it'll give me a better route that I was going for that equates to more damage, more meter, just better overall, right? Light starter, 4600, good meter gain as opposed to, oh, let me just add as many moves as I can, you know, early on in the combo. But that cuts it short and you could only really do something like this. Maybe I could have super dash followed up and got a little bit more damage. But if you're like, oh, hey, I got the hit. Let me go into my mediums earlier, my beam earlier. 
it'll it'll give me more damage it'll give me a better route it'll give me more meter things like that that will make your combos just that much better if you can react and acknowledge it just a little bit earlier so something to work on you know all right so now that i gave you a little bit of idea of how you know combo structure can work as you add better scaled moves earlier in your combo let's kind of dial back a little bit and go back to moves and there's certain hit stun that they give you right now as we all know you get a vanish when you land a move it gives you the wall bounce effect now the weird thing about it is that you can actually be too late right you can be too late to the point where you don't get the smash but they're still in hit stun right it's just kind of another rule that they don't really explain to you is that there is a window tied to the hit stun to vanish that you have to hit Kind of weird don't know why so just something else to keep in mind when structuring a combo it's like okay going back to the whole let's not delay too much right you know some maybe you should vanish earlier than you expect just to make sure you get the combo things like that you know you don't have to do all of legs before you vanish right you could vanish after the first hit just, just a random example right you know maybe there's other special moves right that you just want a single hit of that's all you can squeeze until you can vanish dragon rush things like that you know just weird little interactions to think about when it comes to structure in this game because of the way hits done hits the deterioration and just timing works there are very few exceptions that bypass the hitstone rule right certain moves that have guaranteed hits well what do i mean by that guaranteed hitstone is moves that will always hit and finish no matter how deep into a combo it is and the guaranteed ones are dragon rush right when you get the knockdown you know you call an assist right you dragon rush no matter how late in a combo it is if you land it it'll always finish the combo right you can always do that into a super level three or into a command grab you know command grab as well sliding knockdown right will always give will always finish right it'll give you the sliding knockdown it a little con let you combo into a super or whatever right spark as well will always give you the knockdown effect that it has even if it's super deep into a combo and finally of course supers as i kind of mentioned earlier supers will always give you guaranteed hit stun now for the most part another move you know some some special moves have i'm not gonna say fixed hit stun you know like a like gogeta 236m you know even super late in a combo you'll still get a the wall splat right wall bounce if you're close enough to the corner you know you could maybe level one if i remember correctly i think this is also one of those rules dp is not a fixed hit stun move if they are too high they actually flip out so you know just another move to give you an example of that you think would knock down because it gives you the smash property so this combo is gonna be a weird exception to the rule of smash moves actually not giving you the knockdown even though they should as you saw it was a smash it's supposed to give him the knockdown but because he was too high from the ground to actually land in time due to the hit stun deterioration he flipped out in midair yes i got the smash doesn't matter this can also happen with vanishes if it's at the very very end of a combo where they will flip out so even though these moves have quote unquote fixed hit stun there are exceptions to the rule and then there are exceptions to that rule like i mentioned earlier with dragon rush supers and you know command grabs that hit you lower to the ground i thought the best way to show a visual representation of just i wouldn't say bypassing the hitstone rules but the easiest way to let you push them to the absolute limits was the fusions right you do whatever combo longest combo known to man and then you would do dp special tag dragon rush this is what you would always see right and again as i mentioned earlier dragon rush is one of the moves that in the truest sense will always lets you finish the combo doesn't matter if it's pushed to the limit same thing with vegeto right you would do whatever into spirit sword legs special attack dragon rush common theme here right pushing it to the absolute limits special tag dragon rush build all the meter super 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 k 
kill the character. These are some of the characters that don't have to really worry about hit stun as much as other characters. You know, go tanks, right? You get to extend your combo a little bit too much. You know, Majin Buu, right? You got to be careful. As we know, all characters are not created equal. The fusions are characters that don't have to worry about hit stun and hit stun deterioration because everything leads into special move, special tag, dragon rush, knocked out, right? As opposed to other characters, say, like, I don't know, Adult Gohan. If you add an extra move here, they flip out. Majin Buu, an extra move here, right? You don't get your knockdown, things like that. And this may all seem complicated at first, but you'll get used to it. It's a pretty simple concept. Lights add a lot of damage and hit stun scaling to it, right? Mediums give you better combos. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that by now. You land a medium, you can do some of your best combos. You land a heavy, you know, you may not be able to do your best combo due to routing, but you can extend a lot further than if you just landed a light move. Again, jump ins also scale pretty hard as well. They add a lot of hit stun, hit stun scaling. They add a lot of damage scaling to it as well. One of the last things I want to talk about here is that other moves also have their own special scaling. Command grabs, they have their own special scaling when it comes to damage and hit stun, right? It's a command grab, they scale much harder than other moves. Your damage is basically going to be very lackluster, but again, it's a command grab. It's an unblockable move. You have to jump out of the way. So that's why you get no damage off of it, right? The game's like, okay, you hit them with an unblockable move. We're not going to scale that well. DPs, this is another move, right? That does not scale very well. If you do the fully invincible frame one version of the move, you know, but fusions don't really care about scaling as much. They get their meter gain. Well, used to anyway, not so much anymore. There are special moves designed to give you amazing scaling because you get rewarded. But at the same time, there are also special moves that just make no sense. So I'll give you an example of the two, and they just happen to be tied to this character. You know, a light DP by Gogeta is a medium scaled move. So you will do a bunch of damage, right? We'll get a simple ABC combo. Did basically 5k, right? For no reason at all. Now, EX kicks, right? I did 4,200 damage in three moves. Medium starter, full screen lariat. Again, all moves are not created equal. All moves are different in hit stun, damage, all types of scaling, right? Why? I don't know. Last, what, two patches ago, Vegito's EX legs. Damage got nerfed. I mean, you still explode. Don't get me wrong. But now he just doesn't do as much damage. He used to do way more. But then they nerfed the scaling on it. You have other EX moves like Bardock Lariat. Scale harder. So it's a character to character basis. You're going to have to lab with your character. Figure it out because all characters are not created equal. And I'm sure there's certain moves I forgot that have fixed hit stun scaling. Like I'm sure Boost Fat Throw has fixed hit stun scaling. I'm sure Nappa's Cybermen Grab has fixed scaling. At least the grab part. I don't know if when it explodes. So you're going to have to take your character. Go to the lab figure it out but the general general rule of thumbs are you know command grabs dragon rushes supers sparking fixed hits on scaling right uh of course if you hit your opponent in the air the move will have depending on the move i should say will have more scaling for example if you hit this move you know, it gives you, for the most part, a guaranteed knockdown when you hit the jump heavy, right? Your character's gonna fall all the way to the ground, things like that. Of course, if you hit it and your opponent doesn't block it, then you get a ground combo. But, of course, you don't have unlimited, you know, knockdown time or hit stun time because it works differently. And depending if you do it in the air or on the ground, if you get a ground normal to hit them in the air. You know, like, for example, the second half of Gohan's 5L, you're gonna have less time to confirm because you only had one portion of it hit. So the scaling is gonna be different instead of both parts hitting. You know, you can get both parts to hit when they jump. Again, it's all character character basis. You're gonna have to do a little bit of labbing, but general rule of thumb, the earlier you do a certain move, the earlier you do things, the better routes you get. One last thing to mention, and of course I, I could be missing some crucial things. I'm just trying to make a simple to understand combo theory structure 
video when it comes to the combo formula in this game, right? That's outside of, you know, light, medium, heavy. Because we all know light, medium, heavy into Super Dash, the specials, right? Like, it's one of the first things you learn in this game. But sometimes it's just better just to cash out as fast as you can. For example, there's this combo, right? Very simple. You know, these two moves, three moves, and I've already done 4200 damage, right? Not a lot of bar to do anything. Not really gonna build much meter. Hardly did anything. Almost did 6k, as opposed to, let's say I did a, a full combo, right? Let's just look at the damage difference. Now, a little bit of a tidbit to correct on that last combo. It is a real combo. What I meant to say was to do a combo that would look better, but in actuality is not. So in this combo, I send as much as I can, build the bar super, but still do less damage. It's only about 50 to 60 less damage, but the other combo is more consistent. It's a little bit more damage. Combo structure in this game can be weird. That combo had way more hits. At least it looked like it did. You know, quote unquote me looked like it was better usage of assist. At least at first, right? But when you break it down, it's like, well, okay, the last combo did you know, 60 more damage, right? And it was way less effort. So sometimes when it comes to making a combo, less is more. It's weird, I know. But again, less hits, stronger hits that you use the better right the more mediums and heavies you can fit into a combo the better it's going to be for the hits and scaling deterioration and damage this is not just a dragon ball thing this is just a fighting game thing in general so when you try different fighting games just remember the basic rule of thumb stronger heavier moves scale better of course there's a time and place to use your light buttons they are the fastest buttons you have in your arsenal so you want to use them when you need a fast button now if you're going to punish something right or you need better range you use your mediums or your heavies accordingly and just remember okay i started with a, a good scaling button let me do my better combo oh i started with the light button okay let me do my consistent combo that i know that's gonna land because i landed with one of the harsher skilled moves in the game it's a small detail that's actually not so small of a detail that keeps the top players at the top right they're like okay i landed this move so i already know what route i'm gonna do because i've labbed it and i know off this specific hit i'm gonna do this specific combo oh i landed a2h okay i know exactly what combo i'm gonna do here because i landed this move specifically i practiced it i know what to do here mm, mm, mm. oh he flipped out but you get the idea right each starter has a different route that you could go for or you could just be lazy and you could just go for the same route every single time as long as you know it works but that's on you but hey i'm just here to tell you about combo theory and structure it's only a theory you don't gotta listen to me